Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for TSG kind of whiffing a bit uh, against day trade, they would have seen themselves qualifying, but they still have to get it done here. The final game, $3,000 on the line in this one. We find out who will be the 15th to qualify for the week three weekly finals. Plane is up, let's get it going. Miramar is where we wrap the day up here. It's a wonderful Tuesday evening in my home of Korea, where the teams, most of the teams are, not all of them, some of the teams are in fact playing from home still uh, due to the COVID situation, but a lot of them are here. And this plane, uh, not too bad. Over the middle, a little no. bit northerly though. This is, I would argue, as fair as can be for everyone to go essentially wherever they want. It's uh, it's opening up opportunities for everyone. If you want to go south, you have a great transition opportunities down there on a kind of a vert vertical scale because you can only really get get south on those verticals to the left and out towards the east. So um, so 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 good chance for for teams to go wherever they want. And for Rotus Pro, as we were just saying, gives them a chance to go down to the area we expect for them to go to just southwest of Picado. Yeah, and with day trade out of here and no Furia either, Chumacera is actually kind of open on this plane path as well. So uh, for Virtus Pro, if they wanted to go even further south, they don't really need to. Um, if they wanted to, they could, but I think there's enough loot available around them that they don't need to go much further uh, than they mm. are. There is T1 heading to Los Leones. Uh -oh. Now I say this, and Yan Li <laughs> is getting close to... <laughs> Smart! They can't run over you if you're on the roof. That is uh, that is a wise play, and once again, once again, it's Virtus Pro trying to find their way in between teams. And is that a shotgun of all the guns? And for Africa, uh, last round, I I found their decision to early on get stuck inside of one of those shelters a little questionable. Let's go over to SDK running into MCG immediately. Loop twelve taken down. Ooh. Tank is a great angle. Gets another. Purdy turns on to Summer though. Purdy comes around the corner, isn't able to get two. Tank. Just a little bit better there. Ling Du reinforces his team now. Alo around the side. Ooh, decent spray. Does not get a knock. You're gonna reposition, open the door, see if he can bait them out a bit. That Molly is not going to find him as he has moved, but he comes out the door. Ling Du's not surprised, is waiting. And down it goes, SDK. A struggle uh, for the team from North America, but uh, it's been a good tournament for them so far. Well, what Look at I how much space to TSG that... has here. Look at this. Oh, yes. no, go ahead, go ahead, yes. please do. No, yeah, I mean, that, that's that's part of it, right? They have all the space in the universe, TSG, to make up their mind and where they want to go, but they have to do it fast, because teams are going to be coming in, and as much as I talked about ends earlier getting shifted away from, and so many of the Phase 3 shifts, now, although they aren't inside the circle, coming in from the south, they should have time and space to get a really good position off of this. GX are going to be trying to come up now and make the pull up on Virtus Pro, but Lou says no. All right, that's the opening spiral around the corner. Stepping right into that is CC. One more. Guys, you know he's in there. They're just torn apart. Virtus Pro takes GEX down in quick fashion. Ooh, Xiao Yang. Good tags under Hikari. Takes one down. Lu has started shooting, and that's going to be Shrimsy. Now taken down from afar. That's just mean, Xiao Lu. That's just mean. He's trying to get some more damage into the Sonics, but uh, content with what he did, packs up and moves along. Oh, geez, Louise. Some great shooting again from Zhao Ying and Bo Liang. Yeah, actually, that's true. Uh, the, well, okay. Entz rolling up underneath Xiao Lu. Oh, Nine actually finds an angle onto him, so goodbye. No, no, uh, no fun for us. I guess that's a good analogy. I don't know what the uh, what the Thai equivalent to the Chinese yin and yang is, but if there is one, then uh, then that's Burr Ram and attack all around. That's true. Very, very true. All right. Well, let's see what Sonics has in mind. Smokes up front. Really smart by the Sonics, trying to cut off the vision of infantry. And same thing here from AAA. There is a knock onto Shantion. So for TSG, the early disadvantage falls to them. Gems has taken some damage. Jankyu gonna finish off Sandian with a nice grenade, but grenades landing inside the house of Gems. Pang just narrowly missing on the slightly exposed head. Shia does find Gems though, so good call outs, good teamwork here from TSG. Grenades ringing in towards Jankyu. It's gonna set him outside. Good grenades, find one, but Shia 
caught himself, must have banked it off the wall. Smoke all around him, might have been hard to see exactly the line. Spit uh -oh. here, gets a knock on a volley bear. Now it's just Peg left. He runs right by Peg. Did Peg see him? Peg's gonna see him. And it, he gets him. That is going to be, oh, JQ's left. Excuse me, he's still alive. What in the world's happening in this fight? There's so much smoke I couldn't see. This is such a cluster of an engagement. He shoots away, doesn't see him from behind, and now he's gonna go down and somehow attack all around. Able to take down one of the teams we really complimented for the game fighting just before they succeed in doing so. Sonics not winning their first game either as they fall in 11. They will have to continue playing tomorrow as TSM now come over the side to try and see if they can take some control against infantry. New circle. It's gonna pop. Who is gonna get the blessing? Is it gonna be the birthday boys of Ends? No. We're heading up towards Virtus Pro and T1. We're gonna drive through and cross paths a bit and yep iro does get ragnar so down he goes sparking and silzen still up though and they find the side of a hill they're gonna nestle in tsm still watching infantry but both of them are outside of the next circle more or less tsm is just a bit of an edge yeah, this is not a bad play from Meta. Now we're talking over towards the Freak of Freaks at the same time. This is not at all a bad rotation from Meta. Had they gotten three across and down there alive, they would have been off very, very well. They do have T1 next to them. Now let's see Multi Circle Gaming, yet another team that haven't really found their approach to this one yet. They might want to dip down towards Meta as well if they have vehicles, which I'm not quite sure if they do. Could be possible. Now comes infantry, full speed forward. Nine in the vehicle gets down Woogie Boogie with the drive by. We're two in the car, so they're gonna spread out and try and take some control. Infantry pushing over the top. Xiao Yang still back in the compound. Needs to come up and help. Needs to be up on the front line with his teammates. That nade is gonna be good as Miraku falls down. There are still two left alive close by as they try to really deal with them before having to push forward. Vard falls as well. It's just Iro left alive. We know how dangerous it can be, but he needs to do so much damage because infantry are still four alive. Yeah, we've seen so many highlight real plays from Iro, and he's going to need another one to keep TSM alive in this round. Zhao Yang has rolled in. The push could be on here very shortly for infantry, but right now they're, they're running around trying to figure out exactly how they want to set this up, because if they go over that hill, uh, they might expose themselves to a few shots. Iro has some smoke down for himself. Over to MCG, who had backed off the fight with Afrika because Entz was in their sight lines. Now it's going to be Longsker helping as well. Two down right now. Takey really confident with that 3x spray, but Squeaky has the mini, able to get the better of him. And MCG, only one left alive. As it's Summer trying to push down the hill, taking some damage himself, and he's going to have to wait this one out or... Well, the blue's not going to let him wait it out, actually. He has not many good options left. Now attack all around in the meantime, push down towards the center. And Enz, in my opinion, had once, like one moment to push up that hill and force out multi-circle gaming. That was when infantry and Iro was fighting. Maybe they still saw the smokes up there. They didn't see Iro down, and they thought they were still focusing that way. But it is going to lose them two players. Tick suit will fall down. Maybe they can get the rest up to the last player. I'm not quite sure. In the end of it, will be one more down. Long score with his fifth kill takes down Summer, and we have seven teams left alive. Meta happy with their rotation on into the center. They'll be sitting there for now. Now, but a tag all around one good nade could be the downfall of all of T1. Yeah, you can see T1 knows there's a couple teams to their south, so they're a little, uh, you know, trepidatious to go into this fight. And they know they're in a bad spot, but they can't really push forward or they risk uh, getting caught in a crossfire. Grenades now going to be flung out into AAA, trying to buy themselves some time, trying to avoid the damage. Adder connects into one. Jayers knocked. And there's a good one to finish the job. Adders takes down AAA with two fantastic grenades. Well, I said one nade on T1 could take them all down. I guess same thing goes the other way when you only have a little dip to play around and you have three players trying to hide it in there. Not going to work out for them. Ends now down towards the south. Look at the new circle shift just exactly keeping the fins out of play. Infantry well aware of this. They only have to move the two feet further forward in order to be inside the circle while Ends has longer to go. Now, question being, where can Ends possibly go from here. They have a vehicle, we saw it, but I don't think any of these six players on the other side are going to allow them to go anywhere. It's tough, no doubt about it, and I don't think they have any other choice but to try and maybe send a vehicle forward, see if they get lucky. Adder so instantly puts Diggory out of that one, so that idea, uh, you can scratch that one out. Let's see if there's any other Ooh. left on the idea card. The grenade just a bit short 
as Star-Lord very weak, in fact, knocked by Hansia from Afrika Freaks. A whole bunch of damage now being done to T1. They're in risk of falling apart. Great, great grenade from Adder earlier. Did a good job, and a little bit of help from Longskur. Uh, for T1, takes Hansia down, so Afrika kind of pinned a bit. EJ the only one left for them. And now Entz gets into it on nine instantly. Gets a headshot with the mini onto Rustinmar. No more helmet for him, and yeah, Squeaky trying to do something. No helmet, no boosters, no smokes, no nothing. And sorry, birthday boy, Squeaky, it's not going to be today. Down they go, and now T1 knowing there's no pressure on their back. They try and push forward over towards the team on the other side. Why do you go for the flush when you know there's one more? Xiao Yang gets the double because of it. Star Lord finds one, but they go down. Why do you go for the flush when you know there's one more coming around the side? They knew there were three pushing in their direction. Oh, that's unfortunate. In return of it, Bo Liang will fall down as well. Longskirt is on the other side. Not in a position to really help out here. Trying to stay put, and it's EJ, the solo player left alive here. Trying to do some damage. Solo, 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 and Virtus Pro, the polar bear against the snakes, will see if BP has it in them to get the win. <laughs> <laughs> if I <see> underneath <laughs> the vehicle, you know, you know, Petulance has dealt with his fair share of snakes when that is a spot you peek. Well, there's still five other players alive for infantry to match that insane 24 kill game they had in PCS2 Asia. Can they replicate it here? There's a chance, and I, if anybody could get it done, it's these two, Longskur and Zhao Ying, two of the best in the business. And again, if T1 doesn't fumble that, it could be a very different story here. But what a hell of a round for infantry right now. But Virtus Pro has succeeded in claiming the center of the circle. Let's not forget about EJ, the solo for Afrika. Going to wait this one out, see if he can get these two teams to fight each other. A little bit of opening shots coming, but nobody uh, committing over the side of their hill just yet. Decent damage being done to infantry, and that's going to send them heading back just a bit. Ooh, there's a knock. Petulin finds the grenade onto Longskirt. EJ still hiding on the side. Grenades pouring out here from Virtus Pro. They smell blood. They want to finish it. Zhao Yeager on the side has a lot, but they're able to react fast enough. EJ left alone here. Stuns up and over. There is one knock for Virtus Pro. So for all intents and purposes here for EJ, it could be 2v1. They do get the res though. He's through. That's one. EJ looking to do this. That's two. He has two more to go. He is very weak, but they're running past each other in the smoke. Hyruzen <laughs> hears him. Hyruzen is Spyro. Get him. Just barely. Virtus Pro hangs on. Takes the last game of the day.